In this video, we will have a look at some of the most historic places and views of East Anglia in the southeast of England. Let's start with one of the prettiest villages in Suffolk. It's famous for its picturesque English village green bordered by pink thatched cottages overlooked by the 13th century St. Mary's Church. Many of the historic buildings in Suffolk are coloured pink, such as this one in Lavenham. I had wanted to photograph this famous view for a long time. I visited in early summer when the leaves were fully out but still had a fresh green look to them. Southwold is a very pretty East Suffolk seaside resort famous for its beach huts. Southwold was mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086 as a fishing port. This is the green called Gun Hill. There are six 18-pounder cannons captured in 1746 at the Battle of Culloden. Elegant Georgian townhouses line the heart of the historic area. Many are holiday cottages. The lighthouse was built in 1887 as a guide for vessels sailing into Southwold Harbour and was manned until 1938 when it was electrified. Unusually, it stands a couple of streets back in the town centre. The beach huts in Southwold evolved from fishermen's huts and bathing huts. Often a hut was linked to a property and if the house was sold, the beach hut came with the house. We are now in Bury St Edmunds and standing among the ruins of the 11th century abbey of St Edmund, once one of the most important monasteries in medieval Europe, set in the Abbey Garden. St Edmundsbury Cathedral. The church was rebuilt from 1503 and this is the new Millennium Tower which was only completed in 2005. The 14th century Abbey Gate is the entrance to the Abbey Gardens. Moises Hall has looked over the marketplace for 900 years and is now a museum. Spring flowers in Abbey Gardens with the cathedral in the background. Norwich is the capital of Norfolk. Princess Street is in the oldest parts of Norwich where many of the buildings are from the 16th and 17th centuries. St George's Church, seen here, is medieval, dating from the 15th century. The cathedral was begun in 1096 and completed 149 years later. It was constructed from flint and mortar. This is Lord Nelson's statue in Cathedral Close. Nelson was born in Norfolk in 1758. The statue shows Nelson with his telescope and a cannon. This is a memorial to Edith Cavell. It was put up in 1918 and shows her in a nurse's uniform. Bishop Bridge spans the River Winsome near Norwich and is in the Cathedral Quarter. The bridge was built in 1340 and is still in use today, making it one of the oldest active bridges in England. St Ethelbert's Gate. This gate to the Cathedral Close dates from 1316. St Michael at Plea Church is a 14th century church and stands on one of the oldest Saxon foundations in Norwich. 
I cannot leave Norfolk without mentioning the Norfolk Broads, formed by the flooding of medieval peat excavations in the 14th century. Here we have a classic sailing boat passing the Ferry Inn pub at Horning. St Ives. This is a small English market town on the Great River Ouse, 15 miles from Cambridge. St Ives Bridge is unusual in incorporating a chapel. Over the centuries it has been a private house, a doctor's surgery and a pub called Little Hell. I wonder why. The bridge was partially rebuilt after Oliver Cromwell knocked down two arches during the English Civil War to prevent King Charles I's troops approaching London. The original wooden bridge was replaced with this stone bridge in 1425. The town's big claim to fame is that Oliver Cromwell lived here in 1631. The statue stands on Market Hill. Ely. Ely is dominated by the magnificent Norman Cathedral, a legacy left by William I. On the left is the West Tower, with the octagon lantern tower to the right of the tree. Much of the cathedral is 900 years old. And here we have a magnificent view of the eastern aspect. The most famous resident of Ely was the Lord Protector, the uncrowned King of Great Britain and Ireland, Oliver Cromwell. In 1636, Oliver Cromwell inherited a large estate in the area from his uncle. Cromwell led the English military campaigns to establish control of Ireland and later Scotland. This resulted in the end of the Civil War 